Hello there, it's Leanne Phillipson, registered nutritionist. Happy self-isolation for, uh, and welcome to Cook Together. Um, it is day 13 for my daughters and I uh, in our self-isolation since we got back from our trip. And um, yeah, how are you doing? How are you doing with it? I think we've um, gone through a couple of those hurdles that we heard everybody everybody else went through. And um, I don't know, it's just another day. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you just gotta keep on trucking, I guess. How are you doing though? Type in, in the comments how things are going for you and your family. And um, all the recipes that I've cooked so far, I hope there's been a whole bunch of inspiration. I've had some lovely messages from people saying thank you. I'm, I, they're feeling inspired by um, by these videos and making some new foods that they haven't made before. Um, I had a post from someone today who said that their kids were in the kitchen making apple crumble for lunch, so I'd call that an absolute win. I've made two apple crumbles since um, since the first time we made it. I don't even remember what day that might have been, but uh, but yes, well done, Sarah. I hope it was tasty. Yes, Logan. Uh, Lindsay Grace is saying hi. Hello there, Lindsay. How are you doing? Logan, my 16-year-old uh, daughter, is my tech expert and behind the camera, so she kind of just waves her hands and says, says, uh, hey, Mom, there's another, there's a, a, a little comment, like, now. <laughs> uh, Crystal saying hi to you. Hello. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Hello, lovely. Thank you so much for being on here. Okay, so today I'm going to make from my book, Sprout Right Family Food. I'm trying to make most of the recipes from here just so that when you have my book then you've got a partner in crime so that you actually have the recipe here although I've posted them pretty much everywhere but you've got the recipe here as well as um, this video to walk you a little bit step by step through what we're making so today is one of my favorites it is this way a baked risotto so while you think baked no that's crazy you can now think I can make risotto because it's so fast and easy to make I'm gonna do it slightly more long-winded today but truthfully this recipe is throw everything in and put it in the oven so a little bit um, what's that thing called the stock pot it's not I've never really got into using the stock pot so um, this is probably my my closest thing in the recipe in the original recipe that I posted um, it does call for butternut squash, but I have all these mushrooms and I wanted to talk about mushrooms too for your immune system I have all these mushrooms that um, My very kind friend who did shopping for she got for me. So uh, and they need to be used So I thought let's do a mushroom risotto and um, I think that's gonna work a little bit better for Logan anyway So to get this kind of rolling you don't really want to super cook the onions like you would to transparent in a tipo. You absolutely can, don't get me wrong. But I'm going to put the onions, I'm using my, um, um, I can't even remember what it's called. It's an, uh, I'm using this pot, which is, um, it's a bit hot. I'm using this pot that is um, cast iron. If anybody can think of the name, my brain's not finding it right now. So I've got a little bit of oil in the bottom um, here. I did already warm up the stock. So if you're in a bit of a hurry and you don't have the 45 minutes or so that it takes to cook this, then know that you can warm up your stock or your broth first, and then you can put it in the oven. It tends to expedite it a little bit. It really just depends on how much time you have to do this. So I've got that ready to go, and I'm just gonna turn this back on again. This is the most annoying cooktop I think I've ever used in my life because I have to turn the, I'm sure there's a way to get this thing not to do this, but I have to like unlock it and then it will turn on. Uh, it's good because it is pretty, like we put a lot of stuff on it, so it's a good safety feature, but when I want to turn it on, it takes seven seconds for me to do that. Anyway, just an aside. Okay, so I've already chopped the onions, not doing that on a live anymore because my eyes were streaming earlier when I did these. So I'm just gonna pop those into, uh, in here. Normally, if you wanted to do this super quick, then you would put your Aborio rice, it's a cup and a half in there. Um, and then I would just put that right into the, um, into the pot as well. So, um, 
that's an easy, easy, easy way to do it. So I'm not gonna really chop these too perfectly. The onions, the onion is fantastic. Oh, actually I should probably do the garlic first. Onions and garlic always go in first, don't they? And so let's talk about your immune system because it's so important to uh, be thinking about that right now. As I keep on saying, and I will keep on saying how important it is for us um, no matter what situation you're in, if you're someone who's still going off to work, if you're self-isolating at home, there are so many benefits to keeping your immune system um, in tip-top shape, if that's possible. There are conflicting, um, I'm gonna post this article that I came across, somebody shared it in my nutritionist networking group, the difference between a dietitian and a nutritionist, let's say, is, um, uh, this article just pretty much um, said, kind of said it all in a way, or when I was reading it anyway, that, then that's how I felt. The recommendations from the dietitians um, of Canada are just different to what I would recommend. There was, um, there w uh, was a lot of talk about, um, you know, that you can't boost your immune system, which I would probably agree with actually. So not boosting, like, you know, you're kind of going all, going along one day and you think, oh, I'm just gonna need a clove of garlic and all of a sudden your immune system is alive and it's doing great. It's not so much of a boosting, it's just that sometimes your immune system is really, it's working really hard. Um, in my podcast, uh, Eat This With Leanne, that's coming out um, on tomorrow, on Monday, then um, I go through a lot about the immune army. I go through, go through a lot of, about the, your immune army and the different components of it. You don't really need to know all the science behind it, but if you kind of like, like me, I like to geek out about the immune system. I think it's a really important system to understand. Then, um, then I explain the immune army in my podcast um, episode on uh, bulletproof, bulletproofing your immune system. And don't take that literally. I'm kind of having a bit of, a bit of fun with it. Anyway, this article from the Dietitians um, of Canada, what they recommended was um, things like canned soup, packaged products. Um, they said that there was really no evidence that your immune system could be supported through food, um, and that was according to um, Health Canada, so they didn't really endorse that, which I actually thought was um, such a, does such a disservice to anyone who's reading it because I, there's umpteen studies that show um, to the contrary. So, do your own research, get your get informed, figure it out, listen to what I have to say, know that I'm sharing with you everything that I know, don't go against what your doctor might say or anyone else if that's, um, you know, that, that's just not really a done thing, but um, making sure that you feel, I think, empowered in terms of what are you putting in your mouth, what are you putting on your table, what are you feeding your family, and I'm not saying it needs to be perfect, because it just doesn't. Every day is different. Sometimes, you know, the snackathon is just what's getting you through the day, whether you're bored, whether you're depressed, whether you're down, whether you're thinking, God, when is this gonna end? All of those kind of things. So, you know, you gotta kinda gotta do what what you gotta do, but if you feel inspired and you think, you know what, I'm just I'm gonna do this. And I'm gonna I'm gonna start to eat something a little bit better. And Leanne, God, she does not stop talking about beets and how how amazing beets are. Um, then you can make like the kale and beet, no, maybe I've just lost you kale and beets together, um, the kale and beet uh, salad that's in my book. That's a really good one for me to make one, uh, one day with you guys, that would be fun. So, um, so please know that, um, that you can influence your health through your diet. So with this, these mushrooms, these lovely babies that I'm chopping up, ideally if um, if I had them, I would be using a whole host of different mushrooms. I'd be using shiitake mushrooms, which are actually known the most for their immune boosting properties, uh, immune supportive properties, just to get my terminology correct. Then also, um, uh, so mushrooms are one of the only foods other than um, some oily fish, some um, made grass-fed, uh, beef is a bit of a stretch, but um, basically mushrooms have vitamin D in them. I talk about vitamin D all the time, and one of my um, supplements called Sunshine D3 and K2, that's a liposome spray, it absorbs in your mouth, is tremendous for 
um, for supporting your immune system. And vitamin D from a virus standpoint is one of the most important. So mushrooms is going are going into our risotto today. And really, because they're helping, I gotta use them up, but they're also helping to boost the immune system. The other situation with these is that some studies have shown that they help to what's called modulate your immune system. So if your immune system is kind of going a little haywire and a little bit crazy, then it can help to kind of whew, just calm down a bit more of a meditative type state, or your um, or it can upregulate. So there are different situations. Maybe when you're pregnant, that uh, your immune system becomes downregulated. I talk about that in my book. So um, typically, if you get a cold or anything like that um, when you're pregnant, sometimes it can hang around just a little bit longer um, than normal. So quite important for you um, pregnant ladies to be on uh, your vitamin D and vitamin C um, and include mushrooms into this risotto. So these are pretty big pieces. They're gonna break up when I start stirring. They're really, really super easy to, um, to chop up. And actually mushrooms are one of, the, um, one of the foods that I actually suggest that you get your kids to chop up because if I just take, you know, like, you know, a cutlery butter knife, your kids can sit here and chop them. So they're not gonna chop their little fingers off, but it's perfect practice for them to be in the kitchen with you doing this. Okay, so I can hear my onions going um, behind me. It smells quite lovely. So into this, I'm going to put, this is, a, this is actually a little bit over, <laughs> that's Lexi, um, a little bit over um, a cup and a half because in my Arborio rice package, I was only gonna have like a quarter of a cup left over, so I thought, okay, I might as well throw it in. I've got a little bit of extra stock um, hanging around from what I took out of uh, the freezer the other day to make the, uh, the corn uh, and ginger soup. So I'm gonna throw in the Arborio rice. I'm gonna bring over all the mushrooms and hope that all this is gonna fit. Pour in without making a massive, massive mess like I just did. All the um, that was some homemade broth and stock actually. And now this cooktop is yelling at me. Oh, I don't get to choose what was in this. Uh, in this kitchen when we moved in. Anyway, there we go. So those mushrooms are, are filling up almost entirely. If you're using butternut squash, you can do the cheats version and buy, buy butternut squash already chopped up. And then just, I would suggest that you chop it up a little bit more into slightly smaller, like one centimeter square pieces. And that's just a, they, it cooks really, really well. Sometimes my kids have called it, uh, it's kind of like macaroni and cheese because it goes all yellow. Um, oh, sorry, all orange, uh, which of course is the slightly more fake style of cheese. So that's pretty much it that, uh, for what's gonna go into uh, in here. And then I'm gonna put the lid on and then this actually goes in the oven. So the oven's already preheated to 350 or 180 and um, that's pretty much it for now. So you can throw that in the oven and then after that, then you're pretty much ready to, um, ready to just, just to get the bits that you need for the other side of this. So I have uh, luckily a small piece of pecorino cheese left over from, uh, from a few weeks ago when some friends came over and a friend made a cheese board, if you can believe it, yeah. And um, in my super groovy, um, greater that a couple of people have commented on. It has this little um, sort of catcher bowl thing and um, I've done it before many times. I have to make sure that I turn it over so that it goes in and because I'm going to grate it on the, on the smaller side and that's what Logan was just coming to correct me to say turn it over mom because I have been known to grate, sit here and grate and grate and grate and then it just sort of builds up and it doesn't really work. So we want about a cup of, I've got pecorino cheese here which is a sheep's cheese version of parmesan. You can use parmesan if you want. This actually gives it a lovely kind of gooey 
uh, texture, which is really great, salty from, from this. So while I have my salt and pepper uh, shakers here, I don't always have to salt it too, too much. Um, my broth, I never salt that. So it's good to be mindful of, um, mindful of how much salt you're adding in. So um, is there any other questions or comments open? Okay. So, vitamin D from your lovely mushrooms. We've got st uh, homemade stock um, that I've made, a meat broth, which re recipe is also in my book. Um, and that's another tremendous um, food to make sure that you're offering to, to you, to your family. Um, all the fat that you end up with on the top, most of the time you just skim it off and you completely ditch it. But actually there's collagen, there's gelatin, and a lot of the, the fat soluble vitamins which will come out um, in there. So, you know, the K2 can be in more grass fed beef if you've got some, um, if you're using those kind of bones and you can, you can get that, the K2 from that too. And um, in fact, just tastes good. But really the point of the fat is, is that it really helps the situation in your gut called leaky gut. Well, you think, what, leaky gut, what are you talking about? Well, we kind of all have, have a little bit of it to a certain extent, but it definitely can impact our immune system. So the broth is incredible for uh, supporting the immune system through the gut because 80% of our immune system is in the gut. And the other situation is that um, broth helps to ease any mucus that we've got going on. So whether it's a cough or whether it's um, a, a cold, a runny nose, sinusitis, any of those kind of things, then definitely be having mugfuls of broth and stock. I remember hearing a presentation by the woman that um, that came up with cold FX, which is actually ginseng. So it's a it's an, a um, kind of gets in sneakily to the immune system um, through um, through boosting your um, your adrenal glands, which when you're stressed, that suppresses your immune system. So it's a kind of sneaky way to do that. And she said that she tried really, really hard to get broth into a capsule. And that was the first trial that they did before they came up with the cold FX the way that it is, which of course over the years has been a super popular product and really works really, really well for a lot of people. So her, she would have liked to have had um, broth in a capsule, but at the time that just wasn't poss possible. Now I think we have powdered forms of broth and stock um, but still, it's just better to make it at home if at all possible because then you can leave all that fat. So the meat broth recipe is found in my book because it's what I recommend you start feeding your babies with. So while I'm going to go and put this into the oven, we're not going to hang around here for 45 minutes unless you have 45 minutes worth of questions. And um, so once that, um, once that comes out of the oven, I'm basically going to put in some butter if you wanted to stick to coconut oil or some other fat or just omit it because you don't, that's not really your jam, that's totally fine. Um, and then I'll put in, put in the pecorino cheese, tons of pepper, that really, really jazzes it up far more than salt actually tons of pepper, which is also um, high in minerals, and then stir, stir, stir. Maybe put some, if you have some leftover chicken, throw that in. Do the lemony green beans on the side, some sugar snap peas, uh, the kale and uh, beet salad, if you want. Anything that's on the side that's lovely, 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 and colorful. So please enjoy your dinner whenever you happen to make this, and if you've got any comments after, watching this live then of course pop them down below if you're watching on YouTube um, after the fact know that the recipe is also down below on social media you just have to scroll up a little bit to uh, or maybe down not sure which way to find the photo um, from my book of the risotto and then um, and then you and then it's your turn then you get to make it in your home in your cook together situation so also, if you have any top tips on um, how you celebrated the end of your self-isolation, because there's not really too much to go out and do, if anything. Um, so, uh, so let me know how you felt at the end of your um, travel, if that's what, where you've been, your travel self-isolation period. If you've just been self-isolating, I don't think it's going to be any different. Um, I'm looking forward to going to 
find the ingredients that I like I like to get. I've been tremendously grateful to everyone that has gone shopping, uh, gone shopping for us while we've been here. But it's kind of nice to choose your own choose your own stuff too. So thank you so much. Have a lovely, lovely evening. Enjoy your dinner, and I look forward to seeing you again. I have no idea what I'm making tomorrow because I haven't looked at the ingredients that I happen to have. Um, but soon, Hadley's going to do another video, possibly making some of her favorite muffins. So look out for that one coming up too. Thanks so much. Take care.